When you work with artisans' attic patterns, you'll find that I've taken the liberty not to go into a lot of details with some of the steps. I'd rather show you how to do those things with a little video demonstration. So now I'd like to show you how to emboss. When you emboss, you'll need a few basic supplies. Of course, you'll need a brass template, which is your embossing template. You need a ball tip tool called a stylus, which just has round tips at the end. You need some form of tape, whether it's scotch tape or blue, blue painter's tape, which is what I prefer. Cardstock weight colored paper and a piece of wax paper. And of course, the most essential tool is your light box. The first thing you want to do is pick up your embossing plate or template and affix it to your light box so it doesn't shift. I'm going to be working with just the flower on this template and then I'll turn on the light and that's my light source. You can also use a glass top table with a lamp underneath it or you can put this on a window if you're just doing one or two at a time. But if you do a lot you'll find this to be an invaluable tool and these are available at the Checker Cottage. Now I'm going to emboss with the cardstock. This is a printed cardstock that has a white core and this is a double sided cardstock. It doesn't have to be but in this case um, I've got a print on one side and a solid on the other. When I put my cardstock on top of my template I can see the image through. The light is letting that image shine through. So with the tip of my embossing tool I'm going to press around the inside edge of each of those petals. And I'm pressing kind of firmly and it may take a time or two for you to practice to get that feel because you certainly can pierce the paper if you push too hard. Okay, I've done all five petals and what you see is that paper is actually pushed out towards me. That's called embossing. Now if I want to do embossing in the other direction called debossing, I can keep my paper as shown with the embossing lifted up, place my paper back over that template and outline the center. And now the center of the flower actually goes into the paper and that's called debossing. And that's all there is to embossing. I'd like to mention a few helpful tips that you take into consideration as you're working with embossing. Uh, you always want to make sure that the side that you want your embossing to come out towards you on is actually turned upside down when you emboss. That way the image comes out. Um, so in this case I've done it with the solid paper showing up. That would be my finished side. But you can certainly do it with a print side as well. But it would mean turning your paper with a solid side or the opposite print facing you, embossing, and then having your design on the printed side. Another useful tip is to keep in mind is that when you work with alphabets, they always have to be turned upside down, the template itself that is. So when you emboss and you do a certain letter, when you're done, you pick that up and turn it over and the letter is in the correct format. Otherwise, if you did it this way and embossed, your letters are going to be backwards when you're finished. The other thing I'd like to mention is that it helps to turn overhead lights out when you're embossing. When you take a piece of paper and cover your template, sometimes it's hard to see the actual image, especially when it's a darker paper like mine. If you turn any overhead lights out, it really does help to see that image better and it, you'll find that embossing is a little easier for you to do. The other tip I want to mention is before you emboss, it helps to rub a little piece of wax paper over your paper which deposits some of that wax on the paper itself so that when you emboss with your stylus it helps that tool to glide over your paper. It's not necessary but it certainly does help. It makes it a little simpler. Ta-da!